Greetings, Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to the virtual service for Congregation Shah Yeshua. I hope that you've had a blessed week. And as we continue this week, uh, 2021 is not looking a whole lot better than uh, 2020. And there's a lot going on, and we just need to keep our nation in prayer, keep the people in prayer, keep the hearts of the people of our nation in prayer, that they might turn to the only one that can change anything, and that is God, and through the power of his son, Yeshua HaMashiach. We also need to keep Israel in prayer at this time. So uh, please join with me, Heavenly Father, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob. We just lift up Israel. We ask for her peace, for her prosperity, and Lord God, for the good news of Messiah Yeshua to be spread throughout her and also in this country, Lord. Lord, we're guilty of uh, so much, and we just ask, Lord God, that you would forgive us and that you would heal us. You would bring a healing among the people, a healing by removing COVID, Lord God, and that you would just draw people to you in the name of Yeshua. We ask all these things. Amen. Jeff is going to lead us in the blessings. Please join me in the Baruch Hu. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamvarach. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach Olam Ba'ed. Blessed is the Lord, the Blessed One, forever and ever. Uh, please stand and join me in the Shema from Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4, and then the then Va'ahavta from Deuteronomy 6, 5, verses, uh, through verse 9. Shema HaYisrael Adonai Eloheinu Adonai Echad Baruch Shem Kavohu Malchuto Laholam Vahed Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. Blessed be the name of his glorious majesty forever and ever. Va'ahavta et Adonai Elohecha, v'chol levavka uv'chol nafshecha uv'chol modecha, v'hayu hadvarayim ha'aleh, asher anochi metzavcha hayom ala v'vecha, v'shinan tam levenecha v'ribarta bom, v'shivtecha bevetecha v'vlachtecha v'derech uv'shachbecha uv'kumecha, u'kshar tam l'olta yedecha, v'hayu l'tol d'fol b'en enecha, Uchtav tam al mazozot betecha uvisharecha. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And these words which I command you this day shall be in your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and you shall speak of them when you are sitting at home, when you go on a journey, when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them for a sign on your hand and they shall be for frontlets between your eyes. You shall inscribe them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Amen. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. I'm speaking to you this evening from Exodus 3, 14 through 15. God is telling Moses, that what he needs to do to bring the sons of Israel out of Egypt. Moses said to God, suppose I go to B'nai Yisrael and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you and asked me, what is his name and what should I say to them? God answered Moses, I am who I am. Then he said, you are to say to the to say to Bnei Yisrael, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, You are to say to Bnei Yisrael, Adonai, the God of your father, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has sent me to you. This is this is my name forever, and my name which I should which I should be remembered from generation to generation. 
God identified himself as I am who I am. And once again, he said, I am has sent me to you. I believe that the name I am is an invite for us to want to know more about who God really is. God knows everything about each and every one of us individually. There is nothing that he doesn't really know about us, but he wants us to know more about him. God doesn't want, want to be just another acquaintance or someone you really don't know, but say hello to every day. He wants to look, he wants us to look at him as our best friend. One that we can confide in, share with. Much more than that, he wants us to really know who he is, take an interest in, and spend time with him. I believe the greatest reason for our existence is that God wants a relationship with us. God <clears throat> had a close relationship with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and now he wants the, the children of Israel to get, to get to know him and have the same type of relationship. There is no better place to really get to know God than a desert experience. Just you and him, and God truly had that with the sons of Israel. The relationship that we build with God will last throughout heaven and throughout all eternity. Shabbat Shalom, everybody.
To be faithful to all our generations To be faithful to all our situations Enter his gates with thanksgiving Enter his courts with praise For the Lord he is able to be faithful to all our generations, to be faithful to all our situations. Lord, before your eyes of fire, 
was still the sound of heaven as they worship day and night. We fall upon our knees and join the ancient cry. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Most High. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord Most High. The diamond turns, the angels bow. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord, the glory burns, the saints cry out, holy, holy, holy is the Lord, the diamond turns, the angels bow. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. The glory burns, the saints cry out. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. The glory holy, holy, holy. Is the Lord. The glory burns, the saints cry out. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord. Holy, holy, holy. Is the Lord. Is the Lord. Kim Mitzion Tese Torah Kim Mitzion Tese Torah Shalom, Baruch Shenatan, Torah, Torah, Baruch Shenatan, Torah, Torah, Lamo Yisrael, Bidushato. For from Zion shall come forth the Torah, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Blessed be he that gave the Torah to his people Israel in his holiness.
He who blessed our fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may he bless Michael Badgley, who comes to honor God and the Torah. May the Holy One bless him and his family and send blessing and prosperity on all the work of his hand. Baruch Hu et Adonai Hamburach, Baruch Adonai Hamburach Le'olam Va'ed, Baruch Ata Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Asher Bachar Banu Mechul HaAmim, V'natan Lanu Et Torato, Baruch Ata Adonai Noten HaTorah. Amen. Bless the Lord, the Blessed One. Bless, blessed is the Lord, the blessed one for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and has given us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord, the giver of the Torah. The Torah portion for, for today and for this week is Shmot, Exodus chapter 1, 1 through chapter 6, verse 1. We're going to read from chapter 3, verses 13 through 15. Vayomer Moshe el ha Elohim, Hine Anochiva el Bene Yisrael, Vamarti Lahem, Elohe Avotechem, Shlachani Alechem, Vamruli Mashmo, Ma Omar Alehem, Vayomer el Elohim el Moshe, Echye Asher Echye. Vayomer kol tomar livnei Yisrael ech ye shlachani alechem. Vayomer od Elohim el Moshe kol tomar el bnei Yisrael Adonai Elohe avotechem Elohe Avraham Elohe Yitzchak Elohe Yaakov shlachani alechem. Zeshmi la olam vzer zikri la dor dor. And the English translation of that portion is, is as follows. Again, reading from Exodus or Shemot, chapter 3, verses 13 through, through 15. But Moses said to God, Suppose I go to Bene Israel, the children of Israel, and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. If they ask me, what is his name? What should I say to them? God answered Moses, I am who I am. Eh yeah, I share eh yeah. Then he said, you are to say to Bnei Yisrael, I am, eh yeah, has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, you are to say to Bnei Yisrael, Adonai, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and the name by which I should be remembered from generation to generation. Baruch atah Adonai, Eloheinu melech haolam, asher natan lanu Torah temet, vechaye olam natab tocheinu. Baruch atah Adonai, noten ha Torah. Blessed are you, O Lord of God, King of the universe, who has given us a Torah of truth and has planted eternal life in our midst. Blessed are you, O Lord, giver of the Torah. Amen. The Haftarah re re reading for this weekend, we're going to be using the Sephardic source, is Jeremiah chapter 1, beginning with verse 4. The word of Adonai came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you prophet to the nations. Then I said, Alas, Adonai Elohim, look, I don't know how to speak, for I'm still a boy. But Adonai answered me, Do not say I'm only a boy, for to everyone I send you, you will go. And all I command you, you will speak. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you to deliver you. It is a declaration of Adonai. The reading from the Brit Chadashah is found in Luke chapter 9, beginning with the 28th verse. About eight, about eight days after these teachings, 
Yeshua took Peter, John, and Jacob with him and went up to the mountain to pray. While he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothing flashed like white lightning. And behold, two men were talking with him, Moses and Elijah. Appearing in glory, they were speaking of Yeshua's departure, which was about to take place in Jerusalem. Now Peter and those with him were overcome with sleep. When they awakened, they saw Yeshua's glory and the two men standing with him. And as they were leaving Yeshua, Peter said to him, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let's make three Sukkot, one for you and one for Moses and one for Elijah, not knowing what he was saying. While he was yet saying these things, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. And a voice came out of the cloud saying, This is my son, the one whom I have chosen. Listen to him. And after the voice happened, Yeshua was found alone. They went quiet. They, were, they kept quiet and told no one in those days any of the things they had seen. <laughs> It is a tree of life to those who take hold of it, and happy are those who support it. Its ways are ways of pleasantness, and all its paths are peace. Turn us, Lord, to you, and let us return. Renew our days as of old.
As we go before the Lord to hear from him from his word, please join me in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Jacob, I just ask that you would place your words into my mouth and that you would speak forth from them as we read your word, as we uh, seek to understand your word. May it be your words and not mine. In Yeshua's name, amen. Uh, for those of you uh, who have heard me speak before, I don't do a whole lot of lessons on the New Testament, uh, on the Brit Hadashah, but I will be speaking uh, this uh, today from Mark chapter 7, so you're free to uh, join with me. Uh, we are going to be jumping around a little bit in references, uh, but um, if you'd like to join me in the book of Mark in chapter 7. And of course, I don't have a book marked. Okay. Now the Pharisees and some of the Torah scholars had come from Jerusalem and gathered around Yeshua. And they saw that some of his disciples were eating bread with unclean hands, that is, not washed. For the Pharisees and all the Jewish people do not eat unless they wash their hands up to the elbow, keeping with the tradition of the elders. And when they come from the marketplace, they do not eat unless they perform a ritual washing. There are many traditions they have received and hold, such as the washing of cups, pitchers, and copper vessels. The Pharisees and Torah scholars questioned Yeshua. Why don't your disciples walk according to the tradition of the elders? Why do they eat bread with unwashed hands? And he said to them, Rightly did Isaiah prophesy about you, hypocrites, as it is written, these, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me, and in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrine, excuse me, in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men, having left the commandments of God you hold to the tradition of men. He was also telling them, you set aside the commands of God in order that you may validate your own tradition. For Moses said, honor your father and mother. And he who speaks of Ill, evil of his father or mother must be put to death. But you say, if anyone tells his father and mother, what you might have gained from me is korban, or that is an offering to God, you are no longer permit him to do any, you no longer permit him to do anything for his father or mother, making void the word of God with your tradition that you've handed down, and you do many such things. Yeshua called the crowd again, and he said to them, Hear me, everyone, and understand. There is nothing outside the man that can make him unholy by going into him, but rather it was what comes out of a man that makes him unholy. I'm going to stop there, and I'm going to continue on in a little bit. And I'd like to just uh, talk a little bit about what Yeshua was talking about here. Um, these are uh, traditions. These are man-made traditions. These are scribes. Uh, leaders of Israel who over the years have written down laws that uh, seek to explain or seek to ex expound or cover a new area that they felt was not covered by the Torah. And so these traditions are man's traditions. And Yeshua is not saying that man's teachings or man's traditions are wrong. But he is saying that we cannot ever teach them as though they come from God. We need to recognize them for what they are, and they can never supersede what God has given us directly. But more than that, Yeshua is speaking to something else, and, and it's referenced in Matthew uh, chapter 5. He's speaking to the heart of the matter. If we are so worried about breaking a law that would create another law and another law and another law, sometimes it's called fence laws, I'm so worried about driving a car that I'll never... Uh, break the speed limit. So therefore, I limit my speed to 45, and then I no longer drive a car, and pretty soon I don't look at cars. I've lost the whole purpose of what breaking the law at 55 was, which was simply so that I don't get injured or drive reckless or cause injury to other people, and that's why that law is there. It's a matter of the heart. And that's really what God wanted completely when he gave us the Torah. And for proof of that, I'd ask you to just repeat what we just said in Deuteronomy 6. Uh, in 5 and 6, we said the Shema and the Vahavta. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. Bekol levavcha. With all your heart. Not with some of your heart. Not with a little of your heart. Not with most of your heart. Not even with 99.9% .9 of your heart. 
but with all your heart. And this is how he follows up the ten words given in chapter 5 of Deuteronomy. Moses is writing this and he's saying, this is what's important, people, and that's why it's repeated. That's why we say that, because God always wanted the relationship with the heart. Uh, we also read in um, Proverbs 23. <clears throat> I'll turn there. In uh, Proverbs 23, 26. My son, give your heart to me, and let your, eye, and let your eyes observe my ways. First give me your heart, and then worry about the following. Observe him, and interact with him, and we learn about him. And that's what we have focused so much on now, is first we have to get that relationship, that heart-to-heart -heart with God. And that's what he desired all along. As Moses spoke to God, panim al panim, face-to-face, countenance-to-countenance. That is the relationship that God desired and created Adam and Eve for. And that heart is what's there. And when we go and say something that can disrupt the heart by a law that is man-made and say, this is what God said, and it could actually not be what God said. Look, if I say something that goes against Scripture, I'm wrong. And I have. I'm not perfect. I've sinned. And I have even spoken things that I've had to correct later on. I am not perfect. I do not claim to be a prophet. I would not want that job responsibility. There's a high punishment for a very little margin of error. It's 100% perfect or you're dead. And that's what God really wants out of us, but we can't achieve that, but we strive for that right now. So we're constantly looking at the heart. Um, in Psalm 119, uh, seek the Lord with all your heart um, and keep its, its vote. And David Search me, O God, and try me. Know my heart and my anxious thoughts. And so what is a lev, uh, the root word for heart? It's, um, it's our inner being. It's our seat of emotions. It's our thinking and our reflection. So it's a huge part of us. So I got me to thinking um, our, our seat of emotions. Not our emotions themselves, but our seat of them, our core which commonly come from what we dwell on in our mind. And that reminded me of Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who not, walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scholars. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. He literally mumbles and repeats day and night what God has spoken. Getting to know God, communicating face to face. Not because he's worried about stepping over the line, because he's wanting to understand God's heart. And, you know, that's what God said about David, a man after his own heart. And David certainly had many flaws, and he stepped over some very, very serious lines. But the God of the Tanakh, of the Torah, was just as merciful as he is today, and he spared him, and he continued his reign, and he even promised that the Messiah would come from the seed of David, in spite of David's error. It's not an excuse to sin. It's a relationship with the one who can provide righteous judgment and mercy through our hearts. And so we have to be careful in separating things that, uh, like the Talmud or commentaries from Scripture. Because what they say may be good and helpful, but it is not God's Word. God's Word is the final authority and where we find Him. Sometimes other sources can bring us insight and help us further understand, and sometimes they can be wrong and draw us away. And so it always has to be judged against the Scripture itself. And that's what Yeshua is saying in the first part of Mark. Now the second part of Mark, I think, applies um, very much so to us right now. As uh, we're very isolated, and what goes on in our minds, I mentioned um, the seed of our emotions, our reflections, uh, being our heart, uh, what we think, what we drive, what we meditate on. And so Yeshua goes on, and I'm going to be picking up again 
in verse 17. And when he left the crowd, he entered the house, and his disciples questioned him about the parable. And he said unto them, Are you also lacking understanding? Don't you grasp that whatever goes into a man cannot make him unholy? For it does not enter into the heart, but into the stomach, and then goes out in the sewer, cleansing all food. This is literally Yeshua's crappy parable. Okay, bad pun. I could have said much worse. But he's talking about feces. Food becomes feces. That's not what makes us unclean. And he continued, It is what comes out of a man that makes him unholy. For from within, out of the heart of men, come evil intentions, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, wick, uh, excuse me, greed, wickedness, deceit, lustfulness, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these evil things come from within and make the man unholy. It is what we are focused on in our heart. And when we have less time to fellowship with each other during these restrictions, it's easy for us to get caught up in what's around us that may be bad. I miss people. And I can, I can focus on that and I can dwell on that and that seed of emotions can feed other things. And it's, a, it's just like a crowd mentality. Everything can sneak up. While we're spending more time at home, we're spending more time on the internet, and I just have to say that I'm appalled at a lot of pop-up ads and things that pop up everywhere on the internet. And, um, you know, they say that a significant portion of even believers struggle with pornography. And if you think pornography isn't a sin, um, perhaps we should study this uh, portion of Scripture a little more. Um, I have some here. Uh, specifically, the word for um, uh, out of the hearts of men proceed evil thoughts or evil intentions. This is literally what you're thinking to do bad, to go against the Scripture. And sexual immorality. And sexual immorality is is quite frankly the word pornea. Uh, it's from where we get pornography. <laughs> and it literally means all forms of sexual sin, anything of a sexual nature that is not involved between a husband and a wife. Everything. Fornication. Adultery. Looking lustfully, as Yeshua said on a woman, uh, speaking to men, or women looking on a man. Man. What is coming out of our heart? It includes homosexuality. It includes all these sexual sins are in one. And yet he goes on to mention some other sexual, more specific sexual sins later. But I think it's important to note that if you are struggling with pornography, if you are struggling with anything in your heart, we have a system of support in each other. And as believers, we need to, when somebody says, I need help, not come on down and say, how could you be doing this? But come on them and say, let me help you, brother. Let me help you, sister. Let's get through this. Let's get out of this. And we seek the Lord together, and we see how to get out of this. And if you need help, we have counseling. We have scriptural counseling. We have uh, the shepherding ministries, Rabbi Jeff, myself. For the youth, we have youth leaders. These things can be addressed. But it doesn't stop there. Thefts, uh, and, I mean, you know, the ten words make it pretty clear that stealing is wrong, that murder is wrong, that adultery is wrong. Um, you know, in case you were wondering, they're very clear and they're posted uh, in a large number of places, all the less than they used to be. Um, Greed. And the interesting thing is, I did some studying on the word for greed, and it's not just money greed, but it's desiring to get an advantage. Uh, that's, that's, uh, that's something interesting to me. Desiring to get an advantage over someone else. It, not just in money, but it can be in power, it can be in uh, anything. It could be just a simple argument where you, you are more intent 
on winning the argument and getting an advantage in the argument than the person that the argument is with. Uh, wickedness, all forms of evil, deceit, not just lying, but intentionally deceiving, being dishonest or misleading. Lustfulness, there's another one of the uh, ones. Yeshua said that and is covered in the uh, early part there, but he also said in Matthew 5, if anyone says he hates his brother, he's guilty of murder. And if anybody says that they look lustfully upon a woman, they're guilty of adultery in their heart. It's going to the heart of the matter. And these things can creep in easily. Envy. How many of you have looked and saw pictures of people celebrating a birthday with lots of people around or on the beach or a vacation or anything and said, man, I really want that. This can sneak into our heart. And if this is what we're focusing on, this can lead to depression. This can lead to bitterness. This can lead to other things. And Yeshua was warning about them. Slander. When we can't speak to each other face to face and address something, should we be speaking to everyone else? Can you believe so and so said that? I'm sorry, but social media has become quite slanderous. And, and we need to, to confront people directly about concern. And I'm not saying everybody is guilty of this. Please don't get me wrong. I'm just saying that there are, it is prevalent. Pride, haughtiness, pride. We have nothing to be proud of. We fell. All of our righteousness is this filthy rag. This is what Isaiah says. This is the rags used in menstrual, menstrual uh, cycles for women unpleasant, no one was to touch them, no one wants to. Um, that's what our righteousness is. Uh, you know. Slander, pride, and foolishness. And this one was interesting. Um, literally, the word means uh, not just foolish, but recklessness, or just having lack of concern. How many of us have just been like, I'm guilty myself. I had some shoulder surgery. I've tried to move heavy things, and it's like instead of waiting on help, you pick up and you move it. Well, now I've had shoulder surgery, and I'm still in recovery. I was reckless. And these, if I put this in my heart, if I think I can do this, I don't have to wait on people. If I don't follow the guidelines laid out by Scripture, then I can fall. And... I'm not any better than any one of you, and you can fall as well. And you're not any better than me. We are all in the same boat, and we all need to watch. And so if we get caught up in all these little laws, we're just going to get lost in a maze. And you may think that I have this form of righteousness because I've completed all these little laws that I set up so I don't break the big laws. I'm, I'm doing good, but the fact is... It's a hundred or nothing. All your heart. One mistake results in the kicking out of the garden. One mistake. There is holy and there is not holy. Holy and not holy. There is no partly holy. It's just like there's sewage and there's water. And nobody wants to drink sewage. And nobody wants to take a glass of water and put a drop of sewage in it and drink it. It's still sewage. Okay, holiness. God is holy because I am holy. You be holy is what he said. And so he's saying, if we're just focused on all this instead of what's in our heart and giving it to God and focusing on him and meditating on him, that's where the problem is. And then Rav Shaul, Rabbi Paul, writes in Galatians chapter 4, uh, excuse me, Galatians chapter 5. Um, I say, walk by the Ruach, and you will not carry out the desires of the flesh. For the flesh sets its desire against the Ruach. But the Ruach sets its desire against the flesh. This is not new to us. We don't naturally crave good things all the time. 
If you do, wow. Um, but at some point in time in your life, you have not. And we are tempted. And trust me, uh, temptation wouldn't be a temptation if there's some element of fun or desire in it. But the end thereof is destruction. For those are in opposition to one another, so that you cannot do what you want. But if you are led by the Ruach, you are not under the law. Now the deeds of the flesh. What is he saying there? If you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. We can't figure out a way and complete the law in its entirety 100%. So we can never make ourselves holy. But through the sacrifice of Messiah Yeshua, we can and we allow His Spirit, the Ruach HaKodesh, to live in us and direct our lives and suddenly we understand the heart of the law and the heart of God and the desire to serve Him and to fulfill our life's purpose in Him. We have a reason for being here. And God is how we fill that. Now the deeds of the flesh are clear. Sexual immorality, again that word, impurity, indecency, idolatry, witchcraft, hostility, Strife, jealousy, rage, selfish ambition, dissension, factions, envy, drunkenness, carousing, and these things like this. As if that list wasn't enough, basically everything. Everything that goes against God. And we know, and we are filled with the Spirit. We know what's wrong. Now, if I'm driving by and I see a hungry man, and I, I'm just pulling out my McDonald's fast food, and I say, here, have my fries. And I can pull off and say, man, I feel good about myself because I gave that man some food. But I kept the delicious burger and the most sustaining part to myself, and I gave him the empty calories. What if I just gave him the whole sack? I mean, you can probably see I could afford to miss the meal. Living by the law, and living by the heart with the Ruach directing as God did and saying, be generous and I will care for you. Yeshua said, God looks out and sees the sparrows and they do not care where they live or how they're going to live and yet he cares for them. How much more will your Heavenly Father care for you? That's the God we serve and so I urge you, just as David said, search me, O God, and try my thoughts. Search me, O God, and know my thoughts. Try me and know my ways. See if there's any wickedness in me, and lead me in the ways everlasting. Search my heart. Know my thoughts. And see if there's any wickedness in me, and then lead me in the ways everlasting. And so while we have this time, all this free time when we're not as busy because we are more isolated. Are you spending it searching God's heart and asking him to search yours? Or are you focusing with your reflections in your heart on other things and allowing it to unseat your emotions from where they should be under God's control and purpose? and moving the seat to under our control where we fail. We will always feel emotional responses, but the seed of those emotions in our heart, if it is under God, can handle our responses greatly. And we can just look at the lives of someone like Joseph, who very easily could have become bitter, who very easily could have taken out vengeance on any number of people including his own brothers, but instead had the attitude that what you meant for evil, God meant for good, because he understood the heart of God. And that is what God has been wanting all the time, from the Torah, through the prophets, and the writings, and the Brit Hadashah, all the way till now, God is asking, give me your heart, let me search your heart, and let me lead you in the way everlasting. And that's what Yeshua was telling us there today. Thank you. Shabbat Shalom.
Yidkidal v'yidkidash me Raba, Baal ma divra kirote, v'yamlech machote, b'chayachon uv'yamechon uv'chayedecho b'et Yisrael, b'agalam uv'izman kariv, v'imru. Amen. Yehe shme Raba mevarach, la'alam u'alme almaya. Yit barach v'yishtabach v'yit pa'ar v'yit raman, Viet Nase, Viet Adar, Viet Ale, Viet Halal, Shmede Chusha, Brechu, Laela, Minko Berchata, Vusharata, Tushbachata, Venechamata, Damiran Baalma, Vaimru, Amen. Yehe Shlama Rabba Min Shemaya, Vachaim Ale Nuval, Kol Yisrael, Vaimru, Amen. O say Shalom Bim Romav. Hu yaase shalom, aleinu va'akol Yisrael, va'imru. Amen. Yevarech Adonai, v'yishmorecha. Yaher Adonai, panavolecha, v'yichonecha. Yisadunai panamelecha v'yasem lecha shalom. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you peace. In the name of the Prince of Peace, Yeshua HaMashiach Sar Shalom.